We got through immigration, uh, the bags were waiting for us, and uh, we got Chris with Uber, and we're heading to our hostel to start the process of uh, releasing Globelander starting tomorrow with the Overland Embassy team over here. Of course, it's Sunday, and uh, everyone's out enjoying the sun and the waves. We're on the terrace floor of our hotel that we just got into today after flying into Cartagena. That's the skyline against the setting sky. And this is the terrace where we're going to eat many meals and cook some as well in the kitchen here. Good morning from Cartagena. It's that day where we go and uh, unload our car from inside the container. We are three of us sharing this container and the uh, instruction is to go at 9.30 to the port that is the container yard and I am on the terrace of the hotel that I'm in. That is the skyline of Cartagena. We're about one kilometer walk at a hotel uh, called La Terrazzo de Estela. I'm excited to get back into Globe Lander and take the journey on to the World Transplant Games. We finally arrived at the port, uh, the container terminal. I guess we're sort of going here. I'm following Reese. Reese looks like he knows where he's going. That's where the container terminal is. Good morning. We are at the port of Cartagena. We were asked to come here at 10 o'clock. It's 9.58 by the clock out there. And we're waiting here for further instructions. This is where we wait. This is our agent, Anna. Nombre? Carlos. Carlos. That's Carlos, who is also a part of the team for Overland Embassy. That's Renault. That's Reese. And we're all waiting. Well, for something to happen. There is one thing that scares me, and uh, I guess most overlanders, is that after we take out the car from the container, we're expected to leave the keys here with all our things open well, for everyone to see, to help themselves. And it's a leap of faith that one has no choice but to exhibit, because that's the process here, non-negotiable. The best thing you can do in a circumstance like that is take pictures of every nook and cranny of the car before you leave it. So when you come back, you can compare notes and ensure that nothing's moved. And you hope that nothing's moved, because after that, it's another process to get people to accept responsibility. This is where prayers come in. This is where faith in human beings and humanity comes in. And we just hope that no one shows an interest in what's inside the car, and more so, a need for one. Most folks are used to uh, seeing me in clothes like this. This is normal for most overlanders. That's Reese, and that's normal. But I'm in my uniform with a white t-shirt and all the logos, but today, no, the instructions were to wear a full sleeve shirt, closed shoes, pants. Ah, they ask you to clean up. We clean up good, but 
uncomfortable as it can be. It's hot here, but I see a lot of people with no full sleeves. I'm not sure if it's just a thing that they expect and they try and enforce it at will and not consistently. Even our agent is in half sleeves. Oh well, you follow rules. This way, you have less hassles. And now we're getting ready. Bueno, eh... This is getting serious. So we've got the, uh, the safety jackets. We've got the hats. We just need to turn on the, uh, put on the mask. Oh, yeah. And we're ready to go. Rock and roll. It is still legal. Oh, very illegal not to have a mask in public areas, in government spaces, including the airport and other places, so mask up. We entered this area all by ourselves, the three of us, and uh, this is our first stop. Uh, apparently, I am the, uh, well, the main renter of this container, so it's all my name and uh, de facto. Well, container leader. Cleared security check here, and uh, we are instructed to just walk all the way down there. We're now officially inside the container terminal, and my container buddies are right here. It's well marked. We have a restaurant over here for sure. I could get restaurante. The rest of it, not so sure. But we were asked to wait at this point. And that gentleman there is asking us to come towards him. We're following this guy here. We were asked to come in here and wait at this well, very clean restaurant. Smells good too. This is where most people uh, grab their snacks and breaks and breakfast. It is two weeks before Christmas and the Christmas spirit is everywhere. This is what our paperwork looks like. And it's just got my name in all three spots. Why, we don't know. We'll ask the Overland Embassy guys for it. But that's how it is today. Merry Christmas, guys. After a two and a half hour wait in the cafeteria, we are being escorted into that door over there by that gentleman. And at the door, we're looking at some containers and hoping, while well, one of them is ours. How long will it take? The cruise ship is uh, docked right behind this big white roof that we see here, this big tent. That was a relatively short wait over there. This is the cargo storage area and we're following. We're just following. We just don't know where we're going. But well, hopefully we'll end up at the container. He's looking over. It looks like this would be our container. Here we are. That's the seal getting broken. Yay! Yeah. Right. Hopefully it's all in one piece. So we just opened the container here in uh, Cartagena. We've got three vehicles in there, uh, Overland Embassy, well, they find us the buddies, so we're able to manage our costs, otherwise it's just expensive to be the only one in a container. Getting out all the lashings. And there's my baby. A long journey ahead all the way to Australia and then into Africa. 
It's a hot sun down here. It's hot, humid. But we're excited. It's Reese's turn first. Without him, we cannot get out. It's relatively simple with this ramp. Easier than when we put it on in Panama. Did that twice? Did you do that? Yay! That's one out. Just <laughs> yeah, get out. Now it's my turn. What are you gonna do with your new ratchet straps? Oh yeah. Yeah, that one fit in. Alright, you got him? Yeah, that was pretty good actually. So Reese has got in front. So Reese is the other skinny guy in the group, so he got through here and got in the front. Yeah. How are you feeling there, Reese? Oh, it's like a sauna in here. But, Andrew? Andrew? Yes. Hey, someone under your car. Don't move. <laughs> So that gentleman got to the front by going under the car, um, commando style. Daddy. Slowly get her out and I cannot tell you how happy I am to be back in uh, on this seat. Onwards and upwards. Uh, she's finally out uh, the scary part now is we'll have to leave the car in the port with the keys and that's the that's the thing that makes all of us nervous but that's the procedure here oh and here comes the Frenchman just another sedan going around the world and here we Look like we're going to the moon or Mars with so much equipment. Could be as easy as this. And now we're all out. We're going to keep those lashings just in case we need it somewhere else. Now we're being asked to uh, follow him to uh, wherever they want us to store this car and leave the keys. That I can't get over, unfortunately. So we may need to see if we're allowed to take some stuff out, so we'd like to. I'd like to take some of the stuff out here that, well, mostly electronics, the drone, you know, they're in reach, dash cam, yeah, stuff like that. Those are the uh, giants that load and unload containers and they can take some weight for sure. Fuel in Panama was extremely cheap and uh, I tried to stick to the rules and keep just a quarter tank but I don't think anybody asked or bothered to even find out if I had if I had only just filled her up all my tanks that would be a lot of savings but anyway it is what it is that would be the designated spot cordoned off and uh, waiting for few more testing or paperwork and whatever else this is the moment we're most <laughs> nervous about is leaving our babies over there supposedly secure we have to trust we have to have faith and uh, we now wait again here. Hey man, so how do you feel about uh, what just happened? Not good. I mean, it's good to have the bike back, but leaving it here overnight with everything just 
sat on top. Not so nice. And what about you, Renault? Same thing. Same thing. He said it all. But nice to see our car back. Uh, waiting for the next step. After waiting a little more, uh, this young lady showed up. Looks like she's an official here and uh, she wants to go look at. Well, I don't know what she wants to look at, but take a look. Whatever you want. I know you're doing your job. Just get us on our way sooner than later. That's all we ask. She's going through the procedures of uh, taking the pictures of the car, the license plate. This is part of the process. And she's looking for the VIN numbers. It's pretty much what every uh, border crossing does is they verify the VIN number and the license plate, which they call Blaka. From the perspective on the other side of the containers, and that's where we came from. That building houses that restaurant we were in. Now we're here. It's now for Reese's turn, and then eventually I come into this. Okay, so now she's doing her formalities with my car. I need to point her to the VIN from the windshield. I don't have the keys, so I can't show her the plate inside my door. It's not the easiest place to find the VIN number. You know? There is a slot over there, but the angle is just not right to take pictures. Possible. That process is now finished. We're walking away again. And only to come back tomorrow. Bye, my love. I missed you. And that's it. Well, hopefully, we can get some lunch now. And we're heading back the way we came to the entrance. Out of here. And we are out. And these are the happy faces that work here. People that make this experience for any customer a joyous one, as happy as they feel right now in those pictures. I love smiley faces. I'd love to be smiling on the way out here. And now we're back on the road again. Same day, we had a quick meal and uh, our documents were uploaded by the Overland Embassy team and they called us out again at 3.30. Now we're here waiting for the next phase of this process. Apparently they need our signature on something. Uh, customs and uh, insurance. So we're not still going to get our car out today but we're going to get it out tomorrow. It could easily have been out today. But hopefully tomorrow, there's no visibility on that. Uh, Colombia gives you visual diabetes, unfortunately. So that's why you need the Oakleys to keep them safe. You know what I mean? This is a long drawn out process. We've got to keep a sense of humor about it. Uh, there's no other way or else this could become a harrowing experience. It's really not. Frankly, you get to walk around town, meet some interesting people, and learn some new uh, new ways people run their country. And here he's coming back from inside some office in there, with a lot of papers in his hands, and we're all in waiting anticipation, in bated breath. We're hoping that this is it. And here he is. He's saying we are okay. No, insurance is after this. Yeah, we have to show this to the insurance company. The DIAM. Is that a signature? There we go. 
And this young man is with him. After an endless wait of five days, at least this whole week, since the process started here at the Cartagena port, we're finally here again to collect the, uh, the vehicles and drive out and get on our way. Everybody's excited, we're frustrated, I know Overland Embassy has only so much they can do and there's things beyond everyone's control. However, all's well that ends well, so I hope this ends well and we can get going. We're now walking towards the port at the different entrance. And we're finally at our car. We were brought by this uh, gentleman in his truck. And we have a few other Overlanders waiting to be, well, waiting for release. Our car still here. Not sure this is where we left it. I think we left it in that lane. They've moved it here. So somebody's been in and now I gotta go and look at everything that's well hopefully nothing's missing. There's my baby key. Hey hey. Yeah. Here's a sweet Land Rover Defender. Oh she looks gorgeous. Uh, German I guess. And here we got our paperwork finally. It's a gate pass to get out of the port and uh, we're gonna follow that guy out. And the final uh, thing to do I guess is make a payment to Overland Embassy and uh, vamos! We're in the car now and uh, that's the gate. We're almost out. And there's waiting everywhere. Just to our luck that there's some technical glitch with the gate there. So we're just waiting. So so close and yet so far. And we get to move again. I guess these are scanners. Cameras. And all the high tech that you can have in a port. That's a recent front. I'm happy to get on the saddle again. Oh, trust me, I'm happy to be on this seat all over again. I don't care how far I need to go, how fast. As long as I get to go, the standing still was just driving us nuts. Honey! Si. No, I, no habla español. Poquito. Poquito, poquito. De la India. India. Si. Oh. So because this is all at the truck level, uh, we can't do this ourselves and it's in Spanish so they're helping us out otherwise these trucks uh, they do it themselves punch out and leave and the gate opens we're at the last gate right there 50 meters from here is freedom get out and get going and it's freedom yeah baby we're out this is it. We're out of the port. Now we're on our own. Collect the paperwork from Overland Embassy and uh, head south, baby.